Mr. Genter, you're also busy in parallel with the crypto industry. I think there's consensus on the eve of an election that all of those parties involved and responsible want to hammer out some sort of new jurisdictional framework for crypto regulators uh, to make some progress on settling oversight of that industry. Can you talk to us about the work you're doing there and if you're making any progress in that field? Look, there, there's nothing incompatible about the ledger technology. You know, it's just uh, this Halloween, it will be 16 years since Satoshi Nakamoto wrote that uh, white paper. So happy sweet 16 in a week. There's nothing incompatible about a ledger technology, a decentralized ledger technology and the securities laws. And it's important that in the securities markets that investors get to decide on their investments, but they get the proper disclosure, that we guard against conflicts of interest and the like. And, and we're going to continue to do that at the Securities and Exchange Commission. If a market's ever going to have trust, it also needs to come into compliance. And a lot of this field, and we've seen the challenges in this field where a lot of people have lost money. Regular investors have lost money in a field that's not uh, providing the fundamental disclosure about their projects, about these, these investment contracts and these schemes. Uh, and that there's, uh, it's a field that has a lot of conflicts in the middle of it. Going to a different economy, and we're going to be learning more about that uh, as we go, but clearly we're, we're, we're learning that things can be done uh, from remote, remote locations. We're learning that technology can replace people even more than we thought. We're not going back to the same economy. We're, going, we're recovering, but to a different economy, and it'll be one that is more leverage to technology, and I worry that that is going to make it even more difficult than it was for, for many workers. In Silicon Valley and my friends who work in technology know that what we did to the manufacturing workers, we are now going to do to the retail workers, the call center workers, the fast food workers, the truck drivers, and then even bookkeepers, accountants, uh, insurance agents, lawyers, and on and on through the economy. So what happened to the manufacturing workers is a very clear sign. And so we'll import Chinese-based CBDC technology. So it's going to be CBDC in a box uh, provided to you by the People's Bank of China. But every stock, every bond, every currency, every commodity, every piece of art, every private business, every piece of real estate will eventually be a token on a blockchain, an entry on a ledger, permanent and immutable. We will have truth instead of trust. And we will save over $7 trillion a year. Six to 8% of global GDP is wasted by the friction of the trust industry that's necessary when you have dual entry accounting. With triple entry accounting, which is what a blockchain is, mm -hmm. we get rid of all of that friction. It's a beautiful future. Like what you see in China and their social credit scoring systems, right? If we get identity wrong, you know, it could be a tool to enslave humanity. And if we get it right, it could be a tool to liberate humanity as an American. You know, uh, uh, I'm obviously rooting for the, the one that's on the side of freedom. Bitcoin is an international asset. And also, I do believe the role of crypto is, um, it is, it, it, it's digitizing gold. I actually believe this technology is going to be very important. I am, I, you know, look at it. We have been part of a huge revolution in investing through ETFs. We believe that ETFs will be changing the whole way we invest. Many people still use it as a means, well, people are investing it f for indexing. No, the majority of people who are putting money in an index, in an ETFs are active investors that are buying exposure. The entire bond market is being transformed as we talk right now. I believe the next generation for markets, the next generation for securities will be, will be tokenization of securities. Um, we will, and if we can have that distributed ledger that we know every beneficial owner, every beneficial uh, seller, we all have our, our, our code right. of who's buying, who's selling, instantaneous settlement. 
And think about it, it changes the whole ecosystem. Chinese bank ICBC has been hit by a ransomware attack, and the U.S. Treasury market, as a result of that, um, has been disrupted. This, according to the Financial Times, we're going to get more right now with Bloomberg's Shanali Basic. Shanali, what do we know? Uh, listen, we have the Financial Times now reporting that ICBC, one of China's largest banks here, was hit with a ransomware attack. And remember, they're a, a very significant intermediary in the Treasury market. The SIFMA has told his members that this has been part of the reason here uh, that the system is kind of clogged up, if you will, during that auction that we saw a little bit before. The attack had prevented ICBC, according to the Financial Times, from settling Treasury trades on behalf of other market participants. A large executive at a major bank also telling the paper that such a large party on the fixed income clearing corp uh, creates major concerns, potentially impacting the liquidity of Treasury markets. Now it was not just a poor auction. It was absolutely lousy, and, and uh, uh, you know, when, when the dealers have to step in to save a treasury auction, uh, that's a rare occurrence. And Welcome to the Crypto Teacher. Teacher, and guys, please like and subscribe if you do like what you're listening to. Please inform your friends and family and spread all over social media. It is imperative that we get back to learning finances. And understand how the world really works, because once we understand how the world really works, we understand that it is all planned out. Now, I want to thank those who purchased the books, Crypto Teacher and the New World Order book. Remember, the New World Order book shows you how the world really works, and it is definitely time for you to wake up out of that sleep, especially in the times that we're in right now. And 2024 is going to be one of our most entertaining years. We have the presidential election. We have the drums of beating. We have the emerging markets going to be flipping the switch on the fourth industrial revolution. And they finally start to cut rates. And we know Japan is going to start raising rates. And those trillions of dollars that are sitting in money market accounts are going to start flowing over to the emerging markets. And we know the mass of magicians are about to set up that distraction so they can cut rates while we still have inflation. And in the fourth quarter, once the election is over, the movie begins. And also, guys, I want to thank those who purchased the three kids' books. It's time to re-educate. Also, much love to those who donate to the Cash Shop Patreon. Much love. Keep it coming. Guys, if you're not a part of the Patreon, make sure you're donating to the channel through the actual Cash App. But guys, this next Bitcoin and crypto bull run is going to be a utility run. So you want to make sure you have the cryptos that have real utility. And much love to those who are shopping at both stores. Keep it coming. And of course, guys, we get into Bitcoin and cryptos first. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And right now, we have Bitcoin and crypto pulling back. And again, guys, we know we have futures contracts ending on Friday. So we know why it's like clockwork. But also, we have stocks pulling back big due to rising yields. And guys, make sure you watch the video I did last night. We had Paul Tudor Jones say he's long on gold and Bitcoin. And none of these billionaires who say this are fund managers who say this. They never give us the real reason on why they're going long. And guys, we know it's because of the fourth industrial revolution. And remember the crypto teacher told you. Now make sure you're paying attention to the actual indicators. We have yield rates up big. And we also have the dollar up. And that is not good for stocks. Then we have volume in crypto right now down. We have Tether and USDC. And then, of course, we have the Fed. Repo at $237 billion yesterday. Make sure you're pulling on a daily basis during the week. And we have central banks moving in lockstep, cutting rates. And now we have Canada cutting a big 50 basis points. While we still have inflation here. The mainstream media is going to try to convince you that prices have went down. No, they have not. We shop on a daily basis. We see the prices either staying the same or going up. But remember, this is a plan. It moves in phases. And we have the BRICS Summit going on right now. 
and we had Putin talking about weaponizing the dollar. And it's probably been over two years now where I did a video showing you that Russia was getting off the dollar back in 2014. So this plan to destroy fiat currencies and move over to digital currencies have been in place for decades. But they needed a crisis in order to pull it off. And that's what the C word was all about. They ran the simulation and it worked perfectly. And that's the reason why on my Patreon, I gave everyone a certificate for not falling for it. They went over every phase of the fourth industrial revolution without the people ever recognizing it. And now that we're in 2024, we can easily see the pieces coming together. But again, they need that major crisis. And that's the reason why we're hearing the drums getting louder. Because we have the digital economy ready. And then also we have the machines ready to take over this economy. And pay each other with crypto. So therefore, it's not a human involved. And remember the crypto teacher told you. Now we have Bitcoin and Ethereum spot ETFs, BlackRock, Fidelity, and Grayscale. Bitcoin and Ethereum spot ETFs right now are down. And we have U.S. spot Bitcoin ETF shift to outflows after seven days of inflows. And it's like clockwork, guys, every single month. At the beginning, towards the middle of the month, we have inflows. At the end of the month, we have outflows. Now, getting over into a little crypto news, we have River Financial allows users to earn Bitcoin interest on cash deposits. And these digital assets are going to slowly make their way into the legacy market and then replace it. Now, we have Sue integrates with Google Cloud enabling real-time blockchain data for AI and gaming apps. And majority of these crypto projects are using Google Cloud. We've seen AWS go down and the rest of these projects go down. So that lets us know nothing is decentralized. It's all centralized. And that's the scary part. And with the video I did yesterday, we see Chainlink again bringing all this blockchain data together in order for SWIFT and these central banks to have the all C&I. And in the fourth industrial revolution, they want your life to be a video game when you enter into that metaverse. And remember the crypto teacher told you. Now we have Aurum launches a one billion tokenized fund for data center investments on XRP Ledger with Zonix. And don't forget, Zonix and Ripple announced a partnership back in February this year. So that just lets you know how fast this industry is moving. And the fun is focused on U.S. and the Middle East. And like Brad Garlinghouse stated, that Ripple was there to help the banks, work with the banks. But now we're seeing Ripple is becoming a bank. And remember the crypto teacher told you. And then lastly, we have Gary Gensler wishes a happy birthday to Bitcoin for October 31st. And we know the real day is probably January 3rd. But Bitcoin's white paper came out on October 31st. And we know these dates are selected because we know who was behind Bitcoin. And remember the crypto teacher told you. Because he knows when it comes to the NWO, it's all planned out. But that's all I have for you. Don't forget about the books. Crypto teacher and the new world order book, plus the three kids' books, is time to re-educate. Also, new to cryptos, Coinbase, BitChu, Binance. Do not forget book links and crypto links are in the description. The stock channel, guys. Don't forget to go like, subscribe, spread everywhere. You have your Kobo, your chip size, your banking, your gaming. While everybody's sitting at home, get on stocks, the receiver, the biotech stocks. And while everybody's at home wishing, they were still getting that free money. What are they doing? Drinking and smoking weed. Don't forget about those stocks and you have a wonderful day. Most powerful person in the world is the storyteller. The storyteller sets the vision, values, and agenda of an entire generation to come. Steve Jobs. And guys, you know I truly believe in this. When you look at the New World Order, they're the storytellers. And that's the reason why I wrote my New World Order book. But guys, now it's time to change the current generation. And I wrote three kids' books. You know, I love the Trinity because I understand the power that's in it. So I have three books. We have an opportunity 
to change the generation, to educate, not just me, but I want to show you that I take action on a daily basis. And I want you to take action on a daily basis, whether it's your job, whether it's in your community. We have an opportunity right now to educate the masses. I posted this on my Twitter account. Please share. But this is a short clip of the three books. There's going to be a clothing line and action figure. Please get these books for your kids, nephews, cousins, friends. So therefore, we can start the re-education now. Because as we see, the fourth industrial revolution foundation is definitely here. Robots, algorithms, drones, taking humanity out the picture. We have to re-educate. But let's get into the video. Part 1, King Yashua and Grandma Tim. Save the village. Part 2, King Yashua and Grandma Tim. Save New York. Long COVID 33, part 3. King Yahshua and Grandma Tam goes to China. It's mandatory to get part 1, part 2, and part 3 of this series. It's time to re educate Generation Z.